G'day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we will learn how to make this scraptastic pincushion. It's a great project for using up all those really small pieces of yarn that you really don't know what to do with. There is a free written pattern located on my website. The yarn that I'm using in this project is from redheart.com. Redheart.com is a great place for inspiration, especially if you're stuck on your next project. I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started on the lesson. For your supplies we're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle with a large eye, a stitch marker, you can use a professional stitch marker like this or you can use a scrap piece of yarn, it doesn't matter. We're going to need a crochet hook to give us tight tension. I'm using worsted weight or 10 ply yarn and I have really loose tension so I need a quite a small hook to get it quite tight. You need tight tension otherwise the stuffing, stuffing is going to show you through your holes and you don't want that. We're also going to need heaps of scrap yarn. Now some of my pieces are not very long at all but then others are a metre or a metre and a half. So what I did is I wound them all into a ball. I know that looks feral at the moment with all the ends sticking out but I literally just tied them in a knot. So I got two different coloured yarns and all I did was tie them in a knot. And I know some people are going, oh, we don't do knots in crochet. And I completely agree that this project, we're going to break all the rules. Leave it on the edge. So we're just going to tie a knot. Of course, you could tie it right up the end so that you're not wasting too much yarn. You just need it just so it won't come undone when you pull on the, on the yarn. So when you have all your yarn tied together, I also have another one here that I was going to use for something else. This one is literally any colour that I could find in my scraps. But for this project, I am just going to use the greens. And uh, I've got a bit of yellow in there as well. You can't see any yellow in this one, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. So once you have your scraps, you could also join your colours the traditional way of joining. But because literally the pieces aren't very long, gonna make me a liar. Okay that one was a bit longer. So I've just tied them because I thought I am gonna get sick of joining that yarn. So I sat there one night and just tied all my scraps together and yeah wound it into a ball. We're going to need a heap of scraps. This is just stuff that is too short to make a project. As you can see some of them are very very short. These are just ends of when I've sewn my ends and cut the little piece off. And we're also going to need two buttons. These are about half an inch across. You can use really as big a button as you like, but I probably wouldn't go any bigger than one inch. This is going to go on the top and the bottom of our project. And we're going to make a magic ring. You could, uh, you could chain four and join with this project, but I'm just going to use a magic ring. Or a magic circle. I got told I say it wrong. I think it's magic circle, but I call it a magic ring. Hey the same thing. So what we're going to do is pull our yarn through, chain one just to secure that in and our circle won't fall apart. What we need to do is put eight single crochets into the middle. One, two, three, four, five, So it should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And in this project, it's going to be worked in a spiral so there is no joining. You can join if you want to, but I am not going to with this project. So after we've done it eight stitches, we want to grab our stitch marker and place it in the stitch that we just made. What we're going to do now is do two single crochets into every stitch around. Actually, I'm sorry, please forgive me for that one. We don't put our stitch marker in yet. I don't do many things in spiral, so sorry about that. First of all, we're going to do a single crochet in that stitch. So that's our first one. Then we're going to put our stitch marker in. Then we're going to pop another single crochet back in the same stitch. Now I'm up to a knot. I'm going to put you to the back because you're in the way. 
and then I'm going to go into the same stitch. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Get out of the camera view. We're going to work a single crochet into each stitch around. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're working two single crochets in every single stitch and I'll just leave the camera going because it's not a very long round and we're not sewing in any ends either so yeehaw I know how some of you just love doing that <laughs> I can hear people yelling no no we don't so we will be pulling that center one. So you should have uh, 16 stitches because before we had eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifteen. And 16 is the mark stitch. So once we come up to the mark stitch, see how it's in that one there? We know that is the start of the next round. So the next round, we're going to pop that out into that next stitch. It's one single crochet. We're going to grab our crochet hook. Uh, mm, this is a stitch marker. We're going to grab our stitch marker and put that into the stitch that we just did. Now around this round we're going to do, so we've done one single crochet and into every second stitch we're going to put two single crochets. So go one single crochet in this one and two in the next one single crochet in that one and two in the next putting the bits to the back And, and all the ends will be on the inside of our work. So when we sew it together, you're not even going to know that they're there. And it also acts as stuffing as well. So that's awesome. So we've done two in that one. So one into the next stitch. And two. Oh, that's a really bad colour for this background. Two into the next. We're going to repeat this around until we get back to the stitch that's before our stitch marker. So we don't actually go into the stitch marked stitch. We're going up to there. So when we come around, we have our marked stitch. We're going to take that out. We're going to do one single crochet into that stitch that we just marked. And then pop this one back into the stitch we just did. So now we want to do an increase in every third stitch because before we did every second stitch. So we've done one already. So into the next one, that's two. And into the third stitch, we're going to work an increase. And I apologize that that yarn is exactly the same color as the background. So we'd want to do two into that same stitch. into the next, I'm trying to put my fingers there so you can see better so into the next two stitches we're going to work one single crochet into the next one we're going to work two oops, single crochet next two stitches we're going to work one single crochet into the next one we're going to work two single crochet we've got another colour coming up there he is Ooh. easy to see into the next two stitches we're going to work one single crochet that's better look at that one standing out <laughs> And then we've got two into the next. 
got one into the next two stitches two into the next. We're going to repeat this around until we get back to our stitch marker. Once we get to the mark stitch we're going to take that out. We're going to put in one single crochet, put our stitch marker back. I like these ones because they clip on um, I'm not sure what brand these ones are, but they hold really well. They don't pop out really easy. See how I'm just pulling on that? You actually got to force it out so they don't fall out and you don't lose where you're up to. So we've got one, two, and three. Into the fourth stitch, we're going to work two single crochet. Two zoomed in there. There we go. So into the next three we're going to work one single crochet so that was into the next three and then two single crochet in the next into the next three we're going to work one single crochet into the next one we're going to work two single crochet into the next three we're going to work one single crochet into the next one we're going to work two single crochet Oopsie, what happened there? and we're going to repeat this around until we get back to a stitch marker that's looking really cute how it's all changing colour and it's getting a spiral looks really good so I'll meet you when we get back to our stitch marker I'm up to my stitch marker and take that one out we're going to work a single crochet in there and now it's every one two three four every fifth stitch now so that's one this one's number two three four and five and that's where our increase goes one two three four and then increase in the next one and you repeat that again around until we get back to our stitch marker so it's four stitches and then the fifth one is our um, increase so yeah we're going to repeat that around what we're going to do is we're going to keep repeating this until we get to the size that we want I am going to make mine approximately I'm just measuring the other one I've already done approximately 13 centimeters across or five inches that's what I've done but of course you can make yours larger if you like so I'll meet back when we're back here so I'm up to my stitch marker, we're going to take that out and then put in our single crochet put our stitch marker back in so now it's every uh, sixth stitch so that's second third fourth fifth and our sixth one is our increase and we're going to repeat this around and we're going to repeat it around until we get back to our stitch marker and if at any time that yours starts to go wrinkly so it's starting to go wavy on the edges put in one or two rounds of just single crochet but you want to catch it early you don't want to make it uh, start doing it when it's really wavy and just out of control you want to start it quite early so if it's not laying flat and you're starting to go a little bit 
curly on the edges or wavy on the edges put in a couple of rounds of single crochet okay so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this method until you get to the size you want I have got an increase in every six stitch and I'm going to need to work up to about in every eighth stitch so continue on with this method so the next row because we've just done in every six the next row will say sorry guys it's the next round the next round will have every seventh stitch and then the next round will have an increase in every eighth stitch and so on and so continue on until you have the width that you need like I said mine is about what did, what did I say five inches I've got my other piece already made here so I'm going to measure it yeah five inches or about 13 centimeters across when we get to the end we're going to finish off and we're going to leave about 24 inches of yarn you're going to need enough yarn to go around the outside when we sew it up and by sheer luck I had a really long piece of yarn attached for my next color that was there so to finish that off we're just going to grab the yarn and pull through oh hang on first of all we want to slip stitch into the next stitch sorry about that and then we're going to pull our yarn through want to say something that makes most crocheters cringe ah! and look there's more <laughs> Ooh, yuck but good news girlfriends and boyfriends we don't need to sew them in which is awesome so what we're going to do is we're just going to sew in two of our ends which are the center pieces there so that's okay that's not too much is it i think we can handle two I think we can handle two ends. That's too not, not too much stress. So you're going to pull tight to make sure the center is secure, and then we're going to sew our end in just to make sure it doesn't come undone. Oh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through to the loop, this green loop here, which is the end that I'm sewing in. We're going to go through back there, and we're just going to. So you can't really see what I'm doing because there's so many ends in the way. So what I've done is just closed up the hole and then I'm just securing it off by putting it back through the loop. So really we don't need to sew it in at all because that one's done. Didn't need to sew that end in. And so when, when you make your second one you don't need to leave a long tail that bit off yeah when you finish the second one you don't need to leave a long tail because we've got a long tail on the first one that we made I think I might have already done this one but I'm yeah I did so I don't need to do that's the uh, first one that I made so we've got our two pieces and as you can see mine are completely different with our colors which I think looks really cool so what we're going to do is we're going to sew the two pieces together. We want to put our ends together so that on both sides there's no ends. I'm just going to grab our yarn needle, wherever it's gone, here we go. And we're going to, whoops, going to thread that. And then we're going to sew the edges together. You could crochet them together somehow if you like, but I'm going to sew mine together so that's the end so maybe line it up how you want it to look I don't really think it matters with mine because mine are all different You're going to sew through the front piece through both loops and then through both loops on the other side oops If you wanted this to be the same color because as you can see I'm sewing through two different colors on 
on like the front piece and the back piece and then my joining yarn is a different color as well if this really really bugs you you could finish the last round in the same color so maybe join in a cream or something and then join this on every single round uh, crochet around so that your last round is all the one color and did on both both front and back and then also when you join use that same color again because with this one you will be able to see the stitches because it's not the same color as as the two pieces that I'm sewing together but this is a true scrap project so it will have stitching that is a different color we're going to do is we're going to sew about halfway around or maybe three quarters then we're going to get all of our stuffing you can use the proper I think it's called polyfill or toy stuffing it looks like I don't know it's kind of like the inside of a cushion the stuffing that's the inside of a cushion you can buy that but if you're like me and have crocheted for a long time or crochets a lot you can have lots of ends and what I do I actually save them yes yes I do <laughs> and here is some of mine it's just all the ends that I use for my videos or bits of wool that have accidentally frayed sometimes you get that yucky bit in a project in a ball of wool and you chop it out drives you crazy but don't chuck it out some of these are quite small there we go just the small ones when I've sewn in things but it doesn't matter because you can all use it for stuffing so we're going to continue on like I said until we have I would say about three quarters of the way because if you do it halfway that's a really big gap to sew up still and trying to fight your stuffing in the same time so let's go three quarters of the way around so that's not looking too bad with my stitches because they're quite neat and I'll meet you when we have most of this sewn up and we're going to leave sort of just enough room to put our stuffing in and I'll meet you when we're there once we have it sewn up I've left about a two inch gap Hello. Mm. looks like he's already eaten all my scraps so we're going to fill this up with scraps and I have plenty of those so I'm just going to get these out of my jar and that jar sits next to my video camera where I film all the time and I just pop all my ends in there so as you can see there's all different colours it won't matter because our stitches are tight and we won't be able to see them so once we've got our scraps we're going to feed our monster yes I'm a bit weird I know hopefully you get a laugh out of it so we're just gonna stuff him don't know why it's a he because it's not even you know we're just gonna stuff it in Blech, yarn vomit <laughs> Gonna put it all in there. Great for using up like this bit. What really? You can't really do anything for that unless you're gonna use it for kid craft and stick it onto something with glue, but I don't know why that huge piece is in there, but could be a lot of little pieces maybe. Nope, not putting, not putting that in there. But the rest can go in. And that black piece I know has a yucky piece in it, so that can go in there. So you might have to move it around with your fingers. Just sort of even out any lumps that's in there. And this will also know you've made 
haven't stitched up you'll see a big hole okay so I need to go find some more stuffing because he's still hungry I've got still got a big gap there that I need to fill up once you've stuffed it as much as it can take you're gonna sew up your opening and now we're going to finish it off we're just going to go through some stitches and then before we pull that loop closed we're going to put our needle through our loop then we're going to sew the end straight into the middle push it as far as you can and then push it out one of the stitches See how it's got the indent there? You want that? You're going to cut that off and watch the magic when you pull the indent out. Ta -da! Magic. I learned that trick when I was making teddy bears. Not very successfully made make teddy bears, but <laughs> it was fun nonetheless. Oh look, we've got enough end for starting our next project that we need stuffing for. Found some yarn, and this is actually eight ply or double knit yarn. And it's a, I've cut off about a metre or a yard of yarn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the centre of one of the socks. Found some yarn. And this is actually eight ply or double knit yarn. And it's a, I've cut off about a metre or a yard of yarn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the centre of one of the sides. If you leave a larger tail it is easier to hide it. I know that doesn't sound like it makes sense but it does because you'll need to thread it back down into the pin cushion. So I've just tied it onto the pin cushion then I'm going to grab my button put it through the hole and then we're just going to place it on top like that. It's going to move around for the moment but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it over we want to go in from the top of our work. We're going to go through the middle. We want it to come out the other side. So we're going to have to push this together. We want it to come out the other side of our button. Make sure it's in the right place. This is going to be tricky until we get our first one. On. Where's the hole? There it is. Ah, I lost it. There we go. Grab that. Pull through our yarn. Just want to make sure that stays in the right spot. And I'm just pulling on that side. Now, let's adjust the camera, sorry guys. What we want to do is we want to pull a little bit tight on that because we want this bit to squash in a bit. See how it's sort of made a love heart there? We want that to do that. So making sure our buttons are in the right spot. We're going to place it so it's on the other side. And again, wrap it around. I'm, just, I'm holding that tight so it doesn't go loose. Going into the buttonhole. And again, we want to come out on one of our buttonholes. So again, we want to, if you just push it in a little bit, it makes it easier. Pull tight. But now we want to turn it so it goes this way. So we're going to wrap the yarn around, hold that, go through one of our holes. Now at the moment we've got one in each so we can go through either side. I'm going to go through there. But then when we come out over this way, we've got two coming out of that one and one coming out of that. So we want to come out on that one with the one coming out of it.
Haha. -ha. Gotcha. Murphy's Law, turn the camera off, and I got it first go. So then pull that through. Got to make sure that it's lining up. Again, squash that down so it's easier to pull that in. So now we're going to wrap it around this way. And see how there's two coming out of here and then one there out of there. So we're going to go into the one with the one coming out. And then when we come through this side, it doesn't matter because we've got two coming out of each. So we can pick any of the holes. And again, just open that and get it first go. And I probably won't. I did have one of those really long... Dole needles, but I don't know where it is at the moment. So I can fight with this one. I know it's close because I can feel it tapping the back. Alright, so I'm going to do this again off camera. Got it. This is more like a comedy show rather than a, bit, a crochet tutorial. Okay, so that needs to be... If I just got to untwist myself. That one needs to be over here. Because we want it to look even. Again, we're going to push it down a bit. Pull that tight. And depending on how many sections that you want, so if you want, pull that uh, push the buttons together really tight. So they go into the middle. So you can do this as many times as you like. If you've got enough room, depending on how, how big the holes are in your button, you could actually go around and get more sections. I don't know if mine's going to fit because the buttons aren't very, the whole buttons aren't very big. But that's okay, but if not, you can have four sections to your pin cushion. I'm going to see if I can get more. We'll see in just a moment. Once we do our last one, we don't want the needle to come out of the buttonhole. We want it to come out just sort of underneath the button, but to the side. See how that's coming out to the side of the button? I hope you can see that. So the more times you go through, the harder it actually gets. And my fingers are actually sore now, so I'm going to push it through with that. Sometimes you can't get the needle out, but if you get a pair of rubber gloves or a pair of tweezers might work, just to grab hold of that needle. So make sure that's in the right spot. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this off. I want to see if we can do it underneath the button. I know this is going to be tricky, but we're going underneath there and grabbing a stitch. And then we're just going to tie off this. Go back through the loop with your needle. Hopefully that hides there. See how it's hidden underneath our button now, not? And then we're just going to go through to the other side. Snip that off as close as we can to the to the pin cushion. And then what you can do is just make sure it's all even. As even as you can get it anyway. 
And this one we want to make disappear, so we just get rid of that. So we sew back down as close as we can to where that end is. And we're going to go through to the other side. Doesn't matter where it comes out. Pull really tight. Snip close as you can without snipping the actual project. And then automatically just get sucked back into the center. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is our pin cushion. Now, I must admit, putting that button on was quite frustrating. But, next time if I get a bigger button with bigger eyes, that should make it a lot easier to do. I did get it, it was just trying to find the hole when you couldn't see it from the underneath. So I think that's awesome. So now I need to go and find some more pins. Oh, I've got another one. This is my big one that I use. How cool is that? So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did, using up lots of scraps and making a fun project at the same time. Please share your creations on our Facebook page. Can't wait to see them because they're all going to be different. No one is going to have the same looking pin cushion. Share, share them on Facebook, Google+, and also uh, Twitter. And I'm also on Instagram. All the links that you need are in the description box below. Subscribe to my newsletter located on my website. Link for that is also in the description box. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crochet.